virtual barber shop. It's episode ten. Me and Mad Dog in the barber shop. In the barber shop. Oh oh oh. <laughs> so episode ten of season three is quite a landmark, I think. Um, it's going to be a bit of a general one. This one, isn't it? We're gonna. I think that we're not really having a theme or anything for this episode. We're going to kind of catch up on current events, what what's been going on in the Big E um, and, and and other companies as well. Perhaps we're going to talk about um, our own what we've been up to lately um, with regards to training. And uh, that's both in the gym and in the wrestling ring as well, which is a recent addition. Um, so some big news on that front. But yeah, we just I think we're just going to shoot the shit, really, aren't we, Mad Dog? We're just going to kind of keep it light and breezy. Oh, 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 yeah, light and breezy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's our style, light and breezy. We're, um, so li- we're so light and breezy, you and me. We're well known oh, for it. Oh, yes, that's indeed. Uh, you know, definitely. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I guess, I, you know, it's no secret we... Um, we put it out on our social medias. If you've been following, uh, Mad Dog and I met up um, for a gym session. Obviously, last week I talked about the fact that I've been back in the gym now for a little while, and I'm feeling pretty mm. good about it. And um, you know, I said like, it, what I, I did exactly what I set out to do. I got in the gym and I wanted to reacquaint myself with all the equipment, just kind of get in and get into kind of busting a bit of a sweat and having some fun with it. Um, but then the next step is to get someone who's a little bit more knowledgeable than me, i.e., you. Um, to come in and show me some routines that I can then do on my own. And that's exactly what we did. So we did uh, a kind of a big chest workout, uh, a little bit of a back and shoulders workout as well. Um, and it was it was mega. It was mega. Um, it was so, you know, really fun, actually. It was really fun, actually. What was cool for me, right, is obviously in my little home gym, <clears throat> I've built it up over time. And I've got a cable machine, and I've got a cage, and I've got a seven-foot bar and a five-foot bar, and I've got an easy curl bar, blah, 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 blah. And I've got some Olympic... <clears throat> dumbbell bars which i can load up with weights but i don't have a dumbbell range so literally i saw their dumbbells which went from like eights or sixes all up to 50s which is good for a pure when i went to pure the biggest weight dumbbells they had were 32s 36 if you were lucky um so yeah it was nice up to 50s um and i did think when we went in i thought i'm not going to do the 50s like i'm not going to show off and then I didn't, in fact, I didn't even really want, want to do the dumbbells too much. But then because they were there and because there was people around, you know, oh, well, we did do dumbbells and I did do the 50s and I did have to show off. Oh, yeah. He showed off big time. Yeah. Uh, and not just with the dumbbells, people. Uh, you know, we got into I, I one thing I don't do um, when I'm on, on my own is deadlifts. Um, and I haven't done deadlifts for a while and it used to be my show off lift. Um, I can't lift as much as you cause you're way more experienced at this than I do. I am, but I think my best lift was somewhere around 180. And I've that seen, was a while I've ago. Seen, I've seen you do 180. And it, you know, it's an ugly, like, you know, shaking like a shit and dog lifting it off the floor type lift. Yeah, but you but get it's, it. It, it's a show off lift, isn't it? It's that kind of like, oh yeah, you feel good about the fact that you lifted that off the ground. Yeah. Um, you know, I said last week I've had some lower back issues and, you know, muscle fatigue sets in after a while when you've been going to the gym for a while. So um, I wasn't able to rip 180, but I did, uh, was it 100 for a few? What, the, no, they were actually, it was actually 120. So our maths was off right from the beginning. That's why you struggled with the 140, because it wasn't 140, it was 160. We jumped from 120 to 160. And the reason for that was because we were using 25 kilo bumpers. Yeah, yeah. And I don't usually use bumpers, so we just whacked on the big ones. And I was like, yep, there we go, 20s on. We'll, do, we'll warm up at 20, but with 20s on, which is about 60 kilos. But we weren't. We were warming up at 70, because there were 25s, plus the weight of the bar. And then we put on an extra set, which I was like, yeah, that's 100, let's go. But that wasn't, it was 120. And then I whacked on some tw- what were actually 20s, but they were the same size as the 25s. Um, yeah. And I was like, right, let's do this. It shouldn't be too hard. It's only 140. I know you've got 180 in the gas tank if we, you know, if, we, if you really want it. I know, I, knew, I know your back's playing up. So 140 would have been fine. Um, obviously, I yanked up for like five or whatever it was. And then, bless you, you went down on it and you just... It, Honestly, I actually think if you would, if if your back wasn't bad, you'd have got it because actually you did get most of it off the floor. And with the deadlift, that's the that's the hard bit is to, that initial explosion. And once you're going, if you can then just lock your legs out and stand up, you're there. But you had a good crack at it, um, and there was a little nipper 
doing some deadlifting to one side and I did say I wasn't going to go too high and then we start and, I, and I, then I put some more plates on and I lifted it for five and I put some more weights on I said I'll probably just go for one and I ripped it up for three and did a couple of uh, cheeky shrugs at what was it 240 <laughs> yeah. 240 ripped yeah. it off the ground <laughs> and this this little lad bless him it, it, his reaction was priceless um yeah he just <laughs> wide eyed jaw on the floor just but I, I, I wasn't shocked. I, 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 you're an absolute unit and a complete tank. I've seen you do these monstrous things, um, and you know you you get you get you go into Bluto mode. I can see it in your face. You're like, <laughs> you know, you, you're feeling it, and you're in that kind of zone, and it, it, it's something magical to behold. But uh, I, you know, I didn't have it in me that day, but it was it was something to aim for for the future. That's for sure. But yeah, no, I mean, it was it was good. I think it was good though. The the thing I would say to you though is typically I wouldn't do deadlift after the workout we had done. Like we had taken a couple of pre work, we'd taken some pre workout and some beta alanine, and I'd taken some beta alanine and I'd take it and some margin on and all this sort of stuff and some caffe some caffeine tablets and what have you. And I know and so the not every workout's like that, and I only really do that pre workout sort of stack of supplements when i'm gonna re when i'm gonna either wrestle funny enough or if i or wrestling training or if i'm gonna train in the afternoon i really avoid heavy supplemented workouts late at night because yeah. if you take supplements if you take pre-workout or what have you a lot of caffeine and as we've discussed before as i discussed last week with the sleeping stuff it just winds you up yeah when you're sure. meant to be winding down and actually, you know what's really funny? I haven't needed it in the mornings because I'm already. Because here's the fun. Here's the rub. I've just slept for eight hours. Yeah, you're so rested. I don't need yeah. a pick me up. I don't have a yeah. coffee. I don't have a water. I completely fast for my first workout. Um, you know, I go for a bit of a, a bit of a jog. I can't really call it a run. A bit of a jog slash walk. I then work out in the gym in my in my gym garage, and then I go and take on like about a liter and a half of water. And yeah. then about half an hour later, I have a cup of coffee and then I fast all morning and I eat about, I've actually did what you suggested as well. I've brought my, my food. I've brought my fasting window down to 11 o'clock. Well, this is what we were discussing in the gym, wasn't it? About, um, you know, shocking the system. Cause you were saying, like, you know, I'm doing everything and I can't seem to drop that weight. And I, you know, as you, you, we discussed last week, you, you've changed your whole routine around your sleep pattern, except you're still eating in the same windows. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just suggest, well, you know, the one thing you haven't changed is your eating windows. Give it a go. So we'll, we'll see, I guess, over the, you know, between the next few episodes, whether or not that has an effect on you. Um, Body composition has yeah. changed, though, hasn't it? Like my wife. This is the thing. I was. In fact, I was. See, I saw someone pop a meme up. It was. It's a really old. Um, quote from like one of the early Mr. Universes, Vincent um, oh I should really know his name, really early, like the guy that inspired Arnie sort of early, that's how long ago we're looking, and basically he said throw, you know the quote is like I threw away my scales because if I don't like what I see in the if I don't like what I see in the mirror it doesn't matter how much I weigh and there's some, there's a real good nugget of truth in there right, like if you weigh 120 or 95 or 65 or 150, if when you take your shirt off, you feel happy with what you see, then what it says on the scale is kind of irrelevant. As long as you're healthy, if you're eating well, you're not smoking, you're not drinking too much, you're not taking on too much sugar, if you're looking after yourself, if you're healthy and fit, you know, obviously if you're really, you know, if you're really big and you like what you see, then then maybe you're going to have some health problems later in life and that and I'm not bashing and I'm not I'm a big guy and I you know I, I'm attracted to big women as well right so I'm not I'm not fat shaming anyone but there are some inherent risks diabetes um, arthritis back issues heart issues you know just the types of food you might eat you can end up with high cholesterol um, high blood pressure all of these things are going to shorten your lifespan. And, and if I'm honest, that's on my brain a little bit. My dad just died and he was 53. So yeah. that plays in my brain a little bit of like, well, shit, I've got kids and I want to be around when they've got kids. So, yeah. you know, but then yeah, the, yeah. I had that exact same conversation today in my classroom. Um, you know, I don't talk too much about what goes on in the classroom. And, you know, I've got to be careful, but, uh, we, we do a subject called PDL, 
And obviously mental health is so important, especially under the situation that we've been in in the last year or two um, with lockdowns and things and, and mental health in young people. And the, the crux, the key concept of the lesson today, the discussion was understanding that what we see in the media isn't always real. People use filters, um, things are photoshopped, etc. And that that may give us unrealistic standards for our bodies. Mm-hmm. And that actually we should be proud and pleased with what we have. Um, and I said, look, you know, I am on a journey where I'm, you know this. You've seen, you know, I talk about it. I go to the gym. I'm trying to eat a little bit better. I said, but it's not because I want to look better. That's a, that's a byproduct. That's a bonus. I want to feel better. I want to be healthier. And the other side of that is I want to live longer for my children and to enjoy them. Um, Those should be your motivating factors, not necessarily do I look good with my shirt off. That's a nice byproduct. Uh, If that's your main goal. And that's all subjective anyway, right? That's all subjective. Like you might think it's attractive to have your six pack. There's plenty of people that don't think that's attractive. Like, and, it's, yeah. and, and both things are fine. Both ways round are fine. Everyone, everyone's entitled to like what they like, right? Um, so, yeah. Okay. That, that's basically... So, so, anyway, back to what we're doing on Sunday. So, we, we really focused in. And I would, always, I would say, though, we did a really good chest workout, a really complete one. Very si- similar to the simple system that I use. So I use a very, very simple system for working out, which is you pick a, a major compound movement. And there's kind of three or four basic ones. There's lots of complex ones, but compound movement should be simple. But the idea behind a compound movement is it should use a big portion of the body chain. Yeah, it should, it should incorporate lots of muscle groups. Okay, uh, but there'll be a core component that you're working so chest, back, shoulders, legs, what have you. But the whole body should be involved. So even with a bench press, as I described to you on Sunday, it should start from the toes. A good bench press, you bury your feet into the floor, you plant them in hard, the pressure starts there, it goes through your legs, into your butt, into your glutes, which you try to screw up and grip the bench with your bum. You arch your back slightly to try and grip the bench with your back. And then you push the bar away with your arms, your triceps, your shoulders. But predominantly the chest is the main muscle group that you're focusing, especially when you're doing your mind-muscle connection. You want to put your mind in the muscle that you want to work the most, which will be the chest. But you can't lift the weight without using your hands, which requires your forearms to grip, requires your biceps and your triceps to do the contracting and concentric movements. Um, Your shoulders are involved, both front and back. Not so much the side. The side delt's not really involved, but the front delt and rear delt's involved. Your back muscles are involved. Your erector muscles are involved. Your glutes are involved. Your thigh, yeah, your legs are involved. Your calf. Like, so that's a compound movement. And you can look at shoulder press. Same thing again. You want to grip the floor with your feet, press through. It goes through your hips. It goes through your back. goes through your shoulders. It goes through your arms. Same with deadlift. You're starting from the feet again. Your feet are planted into the floor, heels buried in, hands grabbing hold. You know, so again, as we go through these movements, you know, you can see the recurring theme. They're all compound. They're all working a big chain of muscle group. Everything starts from your feet, uh, which is something you take away from if you take nothing else away. Everything starts from the feet. Um, but so yeah, that's that's your first. That's your building block. That's your first block. Yeah, you put that in first. I don't know if you've seen the. I don't know if you've heard of this. And it's a. I I heard this when I was a kid at school. Um, early like, but when you're trying to fit as much as you can into a jar, if you've got yeah. pebbles, rocks, sand, and water, you put yeah. the rocks in first, then the yeah. pebbles, then the sand, then the water. Right. So yeah, your yeah. compound movement is the rock. Because if you and so if you get nothing, if you get nothing else done, if you get a quick phone call from from the wife saying, "Oh, you've got to come home," so and so such as has happened, at least you know the biggest thing that you had to get done in the gym is done. Yeah. Like fuck all the pebbles, fuck all the accessories. I've got okay, two more sets and I'm leaving. Or okay, well I did three out of five. Now I've got to go because of an emergency. But I know I've got my big thing done, right? And then you do your <laughs> accessory workouts. So that's what I call pebbles. And that's where you start focusing in. So when we start doing flies, yes, there is some grip and some forearm, but we're really working on the chest. 
we start working on pullovers. Yes, we're again we're using triceps, but we're opening up the opening the thoracic, we're working the chest. So we start to really focus in, and they're the pebbles, they're like the little tasks. And you don't want big weights on that. It's all about just volume and pumping the muscle and working accessory groups. And you can also work supporting muscles. So a lot of people on chest day will work triceps because you can't do anything without your triceps. It's all really integral. Um, a lot of people will do will do an entire upper body session, chest, arms, and shoulders. I don't you I don't really go for that myself. I like to be in in and out and one and done in forty five minutes to fifty minutes. And I don't think you can do a good complete upper body workout in that time you need about an hour and a half because you need plenty of rest as well that's the yeah. other thing people forget if you're going to extend out and do extra compound movements or extra accessory movements you need extra rest so you know half your time is spent sat doing nothing well not half but an amount of your time spent doing nothing and then once you've done all that the sand or the water is the tre is the treadmill or the rowing machine or the jog or whatever it is so that's the last thing you pour in now, from yeah. a body, from bodybuilding and weightlifting point of view, that's because that bit's the least important. However, if you're on a weight loss and on fitness, then that might be the most important thing. So that should be your rock. That's the most important thing I'm going to do, which is what you've been doing. It wasn't about weightlifting. It wasn't about getting fit. It was about getting in the gym, getting used to it, getting disciplined, and also about trying to get some cardio. So the best thing you could do was hit a machine and test yourself and do that. And that was my first 30 minutes. And then you had things yeah. to do around it and drop in. And 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 I think the effect the, the effect of that, the positive effect of that, I I noticed properly for the first time really when we got in that ring. Um because yeah, we did this oh, epic workout. I was feeling really wobbly after that, by the way, because <laughs> I, hadn't eaten, I hadn't eaten uh I did all that pre-workout, did a massive workout with the mad dog, you know, try to keep up with the brother. Um, you know, I've, I've been in the gym maybe seven times. He's been in it most of his life. Um, I was trying to keep up the best I could. Um, and I was, I was wobbly. So we, we went and got some chicken. I needed to cane some food. I needed to eat some food, man. I was craving food. Like you wouldn't believe for like two, uh, literally today and yesterday and the day on the day I was craving food. Like I hadn't craved it before. That's good. That's um, good. I think it's just cause my body was like, you, you know, yeah. you've just used me, feed me now. Um, because well, that's what working out is. Working out is a trigger to your body. It's when you work out, you're telling your body, repair me. I've just worked that. You now need to repair that. Your body can't repair it without fuel. So the body says, give me food. Yeah. And it was the case of, you know, you, you do the best you can when you're on you're on a tight time frame. So we ran into uh, into the supermarket, grabbed a bit of chicken. I felt much better afterwards. And then we got to the gym, uh, to, the, uh, to the wrestling gym, I should say. Quality so wrestling. So, uh, yeah, our good buddy Rishi opened up for us. Um, and, you know, I, I went in, we had a two hour window and I wanted to make sure that at least the first hour was structured, you know, that we yep. were getting in there and doing like a full on session. So we went through all the classic stuff. We went and did our roles, uh, you know, our safety roles. Um, we went and did uh, all of the major bumps Um and we, it was funny, isn't it? And, I, you know, again, I think a, a majority of our listeners might be people in the business. And we were talking about, you know, this is going to be the first time for a few of us that we bumped in a little while. Um, and I always notice it in my arms more than anywhere else because it's the same as a break fall in judo and martial arts, isn't it? You attack the floor with your arms to spread the surface area of your body out. And, and, make, some, and make some noise. And makes some noise. Yeah, it makes it sound bigger, right? So you slap the ground as hard as you can. And big guys like me, we can slap the ground hard. And that rattles right up through my forearms, through my uh, upper arms, into my shoulders. Um, and that stings and reverberates more than on my back, which is probably a good sign because it means I'm doing the bump right. Yeah, that's that's the idea. It should take the pressure off your back. But man, it does. It rocks my arms. Something fierce. Yeah, you said um, that when we were doing side bumps. You were like, "Oh, I hate these," and then you oh, hit that, and you were like, "Oh, that sucked." <laughs> yeah, I hate. I quite like side bumps, but yeah, I mean they're low impact. I get it, but they're. Um, I, I I don't necessarily see the functional use of them. Um, and yeah, they just hurt my arms. <laughs> but we did them all. We did them all. We went for it. We went for it. Um, yeah, you know, forward, we backwards. We did it yeah. all. We did everything. Yeah, we drilled. We drilled some basic moves like arm drags and hip tosses and suplexes and slams. They're always yeah. like good moves to 
drill early to just kind of get and especially was, when it was like honestly even when, when you said oh let's do suplexes it's been so long i was like um uh and i went to the wrong side but it comes back quickly it is like riding a True. bike i think i think your muscle memory kicks in after a little while and you're like hey, yeah now i found my feet oh yeah um, little, little stomp pull them in <laughs> wham off we go yeah but we you know, so we busted out a massive sweat in the gym, and then we busted out a massive sweat in the wrestling ring. And everyone, you know, it was that kind of mentality of it's the first time in a while we're gonna, and we've only got it for a short window, really two hours. Because, and I said to the boys, isn't it funny how we used to do weekend or week long camps, and we could go for six hours a day mm -hmm. for three or four days on the trot. And we're in here for two two hours, and uh, man, I was I used up whatever was in my tank after two hours <laughs> plus the hour in the gym, you know, three hours of constant movement, and I was bushed. Uh, but yeah, we did it some was cool stuff. We did some up and overs. We did some in and outs. Um... Yeah. We started to talk about our tag team stuff. Like when we when we come back, what are we going to have? Like, mm -hmm. is it going to be same old shit, or are we going to try and augment it a little bit? And I think, you know, we discussed, the, the we talked about the fact that the, the, the trend with tag teams now is not so much crazy moves which are in tandem. It seems to be moves in sequence, one after the other. There's like combinations of like your serve, my serve, your serve, my serve, your serve, my serve. That seems to be how the current generation seem to be doing their yeah. tag team thing. Um, and so we were like, right, how do we take what you do what I do and put it together in a way that flows and combo off it. and chains together. So we've got some ideas. I don't want to do too many spoilers because, um, you know, what I'm hoping is that it won't be that long and we'll be going to live events and some of our listeners will be coming here to see it. Um, and also we're going to do some training videos. So it, when we're working some of these things through, we are going to, the podcast isn't going to be everything we do on YouTube. So we are going to release stuff and we might, we, you know, some of these things we're talking about now, you hopefully will see over the next coming, coming weeks. You know, I'm going to go back to Rishi and see if we can, I'd, I think, you know, I think it would be a good idea if we could turn that into a semi-regular thing. Even if he starts Adult Nights back up, I've always said this, I've always said that it's good to get a small advanced group together. Yeah. advanced groups shouldn't be too big because when they get too big things get silly and people get hurt advanced groups should be a small group of guys that can help each other look after each other post and bump for each other safely and also inspire and help and like it was great having jakey there and i've always used jake for this i've always said hey jake can you road agent on this or can you just listen to this because jake's great for like his brain for it because he's been doing it since he was so young and he's super into the product. He loves independent stuff. He loves the E. So you can throw your run, you know, you can throw your sequence at Jake and say, hey, Jake, listen. And a bit like, if I, I do it with you as well, actually, you're the same. You're the same. I'll throw the sequence and say, hey, how does this sound? And without seeing it, Jake will say, oh, no, take that bit out of the middle. Take the bit of the end, put it at the start, spin it around, speed this bit up, so that bit down and do this. And you're like, say that again? Okay. No, that makes sense. And Jake's a bit like that. You know, we'd be running through stuff and Jake's like, oh, that's a really great idea. Let's try it like this and let's try it like that. And he had some great little bits that he did. Like that um, that catching sit out, uh, was it a bomb? Was it a sit out, fate, uh, like um, he, they caught, he caught Ant in like a, it's almost like he had him in like a, his arms up around his back, like a pedigree, but he had him oh. lifted off the floor. Yeah, it's man, it, that shows how little you watch old products. That, that is the Angels Wings made popular by Christopher Daniels. There we go. Uh, it's a sit out face buster with uh, in a prone position, i.e., the pedigree. Yeah, and he just nailed it out of nowhere. Like he, like he just busted it out. Like Ant was trying it. He was like, "Oh yeah, but what you mean this?" <laughs> bah, 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 bam, and you're like, "Oh, okay." You know, it just it was great to work with him. It was great to have his his input on stuff and work things through with him. And he's great to bump around with as well. He's always great for posting, and you know, he he likes to try things with you and stuff. So that's that was really fun. Yeah, he's shout just out, got, shout out to Jakey. Yeah, he's he's a good lad. He's he's got endless energy for it. Um, and he's just got a good attitude about it. So he yeah, must be eating lightning at the moment. He must be eating lightning at the moment because he is shit and thunder. Like he is like on it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. We we should probably say that we ended the session. We saved it to the very end because none of us were like. We all know, as workers, and especially as workers who haven't been in the ring for a while, that there isn't a, that there's nothing you can do in the gym that replicates the the physicality of wrestling because there's so much that goes into it running the impact on your body getting the wind knocked out of you getting back up from a prone position constantly lifting guys in all these various positions and the worst whilst part, doing complicated maths basically whilst yeah. doing a memory puzzle whilst trying to remember the last 300 things someone said to you and on a live show as well, they're also vocalising, which again, people don't realise that, that showing out portion of it takes a lot of energy and a lot of kind of being able to project yourself. But anyway, um, we saved possibly what we all consider to be the worst part of any part of wrestling to the very end, which is rope running. Because, and there's different, here's the thing, there's different types of ropes. Um, I don't know if our listeners will know this, but there's elevator cable ropes, nylon cord ropes and then there's uh, rope ropes like proper rope ropes um and the ones at rishi's academy are um co coiled um blue nylon rope okay so it's quite firm which is great for training and wrapped in electric tape yeah and you want it to be strong and you want it to be um a bouncy enough but also you know durable and it's great for training but they are hard and when you <laughs> run into them it is like running into three iron bars that give just a little bit. Um, and the welts that you get across your back, there is a callus that you build up um, over time when you've been doing it for a while that you stop noticing it, or you, at least you stop feeling it as much. But we were all feeling it. Um, and, you know, us, <laughs> you'd had a little bit of a more of a rest. So we said, right, you're a mad dog, you go first. And how many how many laps on the road? On the I road managed eight wasn't it it was eight i managed eight, eight. i think yeah. i managed about 12 Four, it was 14 14 and 14. then jd goes and smashes out what two or 20, something 20, 22 22 yeah. yeah and that's like after. Was, i said to him he had to do 16 to beat you or 15 to beat you and he told me to fuck myself and <laughs> then he went and then he once he was going he was like i was like right 8, 10, 12, 16, 18, 20, 22. He's like, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, but he, he probably could have kept going. If someone was cracking the whip, um, he would have kept going. And I felt like I had a little bit more in the tank, but also, you know, three hours. I don't it was know, good to stop saying. there because I tried that spot again, didn't I? At the end, when we were clearing out, I, I grabbed the I grabbed the um, mat and I was like, oh, I, I want to try that thing again. Because I don't, I don't, and I'm going to call it high flying or aerial, and I know it's not, but I don't go high risk or jumping around very often. You and I imagine really... that I don't leave my feet exactly. I don't bump very often, right? So, and I did something kind of cool. It was cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up. It was kind of cool. It was only an elbow drop, but I did a little volte into an elbow drop, and it was a little bit of technical skill to get my feet in the right place, and I nailed it. Um, and then I tried it a second time, and I didn't get it, and that frustrates me. Because is it a one-time fluke, or can I do that spot? That's it. You know, can I can I do that? So I wanted to have another go at it, and I will try again. But I was so but gassed, and when you when, you know, I had to, I had to post off my left arm. As I'm pulling myself so I can vault over, I've got to let go of the right because I'm coming over bodily, and I've got to swing my legs up underneath myself. So my legs are coming out one side over the rope. And then I'm swinging them underneath me so that they're laying the other way when I land on my back. Which, yeah. for little guys, piece of piss, right? They do it all the yeah. time. For me, at 140 odd kilos, and I know I've lost some, but still, best part of 140 kilos when I've got some food and water in me, it's hard. And that's a lot of pressure all on my left arm. It's not, and it's not my strong arm. My left arm, my off arm, I'm right handed. So I'm trying to post on that, and it just didn't have the strength. Literally, my arm collapsed. Like my bicep didn't have it. I collapsed. I pinched my nipple on the rope, and I fell on my face. Um, and I was like, "Yeah, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're leaving." <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But these things happen, and you're right. I think if you had tried that, having a bit fresh, you'd have nailed it. But we, we, and I, I suppose that the the preface for that was we were talking again about what can we do when we come back. And we were talking about subverting expectations because, you know, we have established you're the steak heavy and I'm the sizzle. You know, you're the Matt Hardy and I'm the Jeff. <laughs> not, 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 not saying we're not as good. That either, not, not that I'm the Matt or Jeff, but in... no, no, and I'm certainly not Jeff. But you know, <laughs> Mad Dog is the the guy with the roots on the, in the ground, and I'm the guy that goes off the top. 
Um, and it would be nice to subvert that expectation for big events. And, you know, Mad Dog was like, right, well, I can do, I believe it's called a slingshot elbow, by the way. I think it's the popular name for it. Um, a slingshot elbow, uh, you know, from the outside to the in and then dropping the elbow on a guy on the floor. Um, and I said, well, I can be the state heavy for the setup for that. I can give them a move, the big stalling suplex or whatever, whatever it is I like to do. I would usually land, yeah. That yeah, to set me. up something for you and then also we drilled well you drilled moon salts for the first time in what you i think you said about four five, or five years, years. I, I have i haven't done a moonie in training since before tommy was born yeah tommy's man. five in the summer so it would have been probably at least five if not five and to be fair and that's towards the end of my training as well when i stopped like when, when tommy was born i didn't really do a lot of training i was more doing shows and what have you so and you get to that point in your training where when you're early days in training you try everything yeah you try everything because you don't know what's going to fit you know you try every shoe one until you find what fits slowly over time your coaches your style what you need to do at the weekends or on the camps what your promoters want you to do, what your size and the position on the show expects you to do, that kind of dictates what you train. Like, I stopped doing Moonies because I'm 6'2 and 140 kilos. When I go to a show, the promoter doesn't say, oh, yeah, Mad Dog, um, you're out first, and you can do a Moonie, can't you? They don't, like, no one has ever said that to me. No. And, and but, again, in all reality, was- like... That's not what I'm. I, I'm not expected to go out there and do that. And and often my opponents, they're the or either I'm up against another really big unit, so no one's expecting to see moonsaults in this match. Or more often than not, I'm trying to eat a little guy, and that's his stick. Why yeah, do I? Yeah. I'm not meant to take his stick. Same as I used to get really upset when people, when little guys took really big moves like big stalling suplexes or um, TKOs or you know. Samoans, and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, you weigh a buck but oh five. We, we know we, your role, but we did we did talk about the fact that just because you can do it and because you drilled it doesn't mean it's going to become part of the repertoire for every mm. single match. It's something that we're going to say for special occasions. And, and funny enough, in the lead up to this pod, I was reading the dirt sheets, and um, Cesaro was talking about the UFO, where he has the guy on the rack and he spins around, and takes his hands down. And he said, I'm not going to do it all the time because it needs to feel special. It needs to be a momentous move that I pull out on those big matches. And that is the combo. The combo moonsault will be one of those. It will be yeah. when the when the moment arises where we're like, right, we got a thousand people in. It's a hot crowd. We got we're in the main event or whatever it is, whatever the situation is, if it calls for it, we know we've got it. And that will be when we pull that one out. Um, and, it, and it will feel special when we do. Um, we're talking about the dirt. Especially because it's always a bit special when you do a Mooney. Like, everyone, it's always special when you do it. I like, I think it will just elevate that. The pop would be incredible. If if it's like, holy shit, Mad Dog's done one, and then you do a nice one. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, man, you uh, you put yourself down. Yours was fine, man. Like, And it was safe. What, what you know... You're going to have to get yourself some knee pads, by the way, bro. You can't. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that, no, they're, they're, I'm padded up. They're, I was wearing pads on Sunday, mate. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mad I've, learned that, I've learned that lesson. I learned that lesson. Mad Dog used to work padless, and it freaks yeah. me out. Um, you know me; I'm 90 percent pad these days. Um, mm-hmm. More pad than man. Yeah, more, more pad, pad than man. man. But uh, yeah. Um, anyway, look, we're about halfway through our time slot that we like to keep to, and we've just mentioned the dirt sheet, so we should probably move on to talking about current events. Um, okay. So I just talked about Cesaro, and I guess that segues nicely into um, predictions for Backlash and kind of the fallout of WrestleMania. Which has been quite quiet, right, so far. I like guess. For something called WrestleMania Backlash, we're now two and a half, three weeks post-Backlash, two weeks out from the pay-per-view, and how many matches are announced? Uh, well, two officially, and one of them's just changed. <laughs> and... Two, I think there's two rumored ones so far, um, but like the, the big thing that you said, yeah, it's quiet. And the thing about post WrestleMania is we normally have that post WrestleMania Raw where something big happens. There's normally someone loses someone, a title or someone turns up or yeah, someone returns is the big thing, isn't it? Someone normally shows up or comes out or comes back from injury or retirement or whatever. I, I haven't heard anything like that. 
we've had the releases we've had the people that have been let go which was sad because um samoa joe was on that list and billy Kay and peyton royce which was been the bit probably the biggest shocks of it and bo dallas, bo dallas. As well, no, as well which obviously puts i don't know if this was on the one that was recorded or not with dan but dan barnstall mentioned that there was a rumor floating before wrestlemania that bo was going to be repackaged as um, the, the the kind of the other fiend or the fiend two to work a feud with Bray. Now that's probably not going to happen, seeing as Bo's been released. Unless, unless Bo Dallas being released is a massive red herring to put us off when he then yeah. appears in a yeah. fiend costume. Like that can't be Bo. Bo was released, and they exactly. are clever. And they are clever enough to try that, but they are yeah, also absolutely. Like, yeah, it, it, it would, and, and I'd be intrigued with that. That'd be great. Uh, but at the moment, that's all conjecture. We have no word on that whatsoever. But you're and there's right. some people we haven't seen. There's some people that have been auspicious by their lack of presence. Omas and AJ Styles haven't been seen since they picked the titles up, and they haven't been seen. But it does look like they're kicking. They're going to kick the tag division in Raw up a lip because you've got the today. In fact, so you've got the announcement of a new tag team. Yeah. RK Bro. Um, yeah. There's Shelty B and I'm gonna be show my, I'm gonna show that I can't remember his name now. But T Bar and Mace, New Day, Shelty B and his tag partner, and I apologize to his tag partner. I'm sure you're a great person, but I don't remember your name. Um the top of my head, I just said Shelty B, right? Um, and and yeah, and then RK Bro. So that's four tag teams. So I'm yeah. guessing that. They're building that, that one of them will then face... You've got to think, haven't you, that they just don't trust Omas, Omas to do a match again? Even with uh, AJ I, carrying it? I mean, I didn't hide my feelings about WrestleMania. I think it exposed how limited and weak he is. And, uh, you know, for a guy his size, he had no presence. I didn't like his the way he smiled. Um, you know, I, it just didn't do enough for me. But anyway, um, what I do rate is obviously that they clearly are investing some time and effort into the tag team scene, which is great because it's basically it's been lacking for a while. And I do still, I mean, I'm not a huge riddle guy, but I do appreciate Randy Orton taking that spot. Um, and, and kind of, I, you know, from what, you know, you, we can understand without any, I don't know. I think I'd rather see him smash him about actually. Just potato yeah, him around and, the ring. And if you could it, just literally it's build it's probably going to go imagine. that way. <laughs> like, let's face it. Like, I'd rather just see him potato him around. I, I'm sure Matt Riddle's a lovely bloke, but he gets right on my tits. It's the part of the product that's not, I guess, goes back to what, what we say all the time. And I'm sure people are bored of it here and they say, it's not for me. Like, yeah, that yeah. character's not for me. I think it's for me 25 years ago when I was a stoner skate kid. But even then, I probably wouldn't have tuned into it because I would have said that's not real. Well, we and maybe we, we had RVD who was vastly superior. Well, that's it, right? If you're going to do it, do it, bring back RVD exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, what I mean to say is that I kind of respect that Randy. Did you see? Guy. Did you see him plugging his blunts on WrestleMania? I did. Yes, <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> his, his rolling papers on it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, shameless. Out, shameless. shameless, you just handed out but on WrestleMania. <laughs> I do, I, I, I gotta say, I do like that Randy seems to be that guy that, that, that they can put into any slot that needs filling. Uh, you know, all right, tag team division's a bit lacking. Randy's got enough name power. Let's put him with a young lad. Let's create a tag team off the back of a funny name. And suddenly it's telling. It's awesome. Yeah, some it? backstage, uh, I'm guessing some backstage pun someone said. Yeah, someone must have said it in passing, like, oh, okay, bro. And then that came, became a thing. But Randy was like, yeah, I'll do that. You know, and it, it, it's that kind of, he's that guy at the moment that you can just put into any slot and it he's works. always been like that, though. Like, think about back with the legacy. He yeah. Took two lads under his wing, you know, Cody yeah. and um, the quitter. Teddy, and, Teddy, Teddy Biasi. And the quitter, the Marine 2, then I'm out of here. Um, yeah, Ted DiBiase, and actually, to be fair, back then he was the one we all. Well, he's, 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 in my group of mates, Ted DiBiase was one that we fancied to go all the way. 
Yeah, so did at I. The two, yeah, at the two, he had the star power. I guess he just didn't want it. Didn't 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 want it enough. But yeah, he took them under the and you know he did the job with them all the time. In fact, yeah. that was I think he probably is going to end up doing a very similar storyline with 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 um, Riddle, which was he got annoyed with them because they kept costing him matches. They'd yeah. run in to do interference on his matches. They were working tag. He was working solo. They'd run in on interference and cost him the match. And that's yeah. what eventually exploded it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's cool. So, uh, you know, it's something new. It's something different. I can't, I, can't, I can't hate that at the moment. We'll see how it plays out. The other, there was a match announced, which I talked about, which was a WrestleMania rematch. Because we said, even with Dan, that this is being repackaged as not just backlash, it's WrestleMania backlash. Yeah. Which kind of tells us that we're probably going to end up with a bunch of rematches. But the match that was announced was a WrestleMania rematch. And it seems like, from what I'm reading on the dirt sheets, that it's now been augmented and changed again. So we had, we had originally announced Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre in a WrestleMania rematch. But they've recently added, or possibly added, Braun Strowman to it to make it a triple threat. Now, we have our preamble unrecorded, and you called it straight away. That is just so that... Uh, McIntyre can remain clean, strong. You know he can lose strong. He doesn't. He, can, he and I think it's really important now that they keep McIntyre off the belt. Yeah, keep him off the he, like keep him off the belt as long as possible, convincingly without without jobbing him out. Yeah, I think I I I think this needs to be his last kind of shot at it, and then segue off into a feud with someone else, you know, just to kind of keep him in that, mm-hmm. in that area yeah. so that Lashley can have some defences against some other people. I still want Lashley versus Big E. I still want that match. Um, I think, you know, they're holding off on that, but I think we're going in that direction. I really hope so. I hope um, the rumours aren't true that we're going to get another Big E versus Apollo Crews match at Backlash. I don't want to see that again. No, I love been, both been, those act, those workers are great. They're fantastic, and I liked their match. I won't, I won't go as far as I loved their match. I didn't love it. I really, hate, I, you know, obviously, I was really, I was really outspoken last week about how I feel about the politics of the creative on their match at Mania. But if, forget, forget all of that. I don't want to see it again. It's done. If, it's done. If it happens again, why? You got what you wanted out of it at WrestleMania. You got the belt onto Apollo. Uh, Big E still looks strong. The only way you're going to have that match is if Big E wins, why would he need smashes to... And smashes both of them. That's the yeah. only way that match works, if he re- literally wrecks both of them and walks away to the top to the top, to the top of the table, like, you know, to, off to the, t- the heavyweights. But he doesn't need the IC belt to do that. No. And if you have him lose dirty again, well, what was the point? Because he just did that at WrestleMania. Yeah. And if you have him lose clean, now you've damaged him. He, mm-hmm. He's now going to have to build up even more to get back up to a status where we believe that he could go up against Lashley. I just don't see... I hope... I, I think you're right. I, I'm with you. And what match right. would they have? Because they had some really quality matches on, on the build-up. Oh, how, how do you follow a Nigerian drum match? Like, <laughs> oh, ridiculous. <laughs> Right, move on. let's move on because we can get into the negativity trade with this one. The the match that ha- the other match has been officially announced is genuinely intriguing to me. Um, is uh, Bianca Belair defending her newly won belt against Bailey? Um, and I so said cool. so cool it's straight great. away that Bailey was the perfect next opponent for me. Like I think you know that's that's bang on the money. I think. It's a it's a it's a clear winner. Belair's going over. There's no reason for Bailey to win it. But yeah. and then Bailey and Sasha can do their like get back together yeah. over a common enemy. Yeah, they can they can they can lick their wounds and over a common enemy and discuss yeah. that, and then they can tag back up again. And Sasha works best as um a heel. Bailey's work Bailey's worked amazing as a heel for ages. Like yeah. I was a massive hugger. I really was. I loved <laughs> Bailey as a face. It was fantastic. I like everything about it in NXT and her step up to um, to the main card. I liked it. I think she's a fantastic worker. But I think that match, I think you're right, is going to be absolutely amazing. I think it's fresh. Um, I think, you know, it's it's not one that we've seen um, in, on certainly on not, not that level. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. Um, it'll be interesting to see. And I think, you know, again, it'll be a quality in-ring product match. 
On to nothing. Those are the only two that have been officially announced. And as I said, the triple threat is not official yet at the time of recording this. It's it's definitely McIntyre and Lashley with Strowman possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, so the other predicted matches is Reigns versus Cesaro. But they are saying that it's not still very possible. backlashy, though, is it? Where's the backlash? Well, they're, they're still saying it's possible that it could be Reigns and Edge one on one. It could even have something doing with Daniel Bryan. Um, Daniel but, Bryan made a really weird statement after WrestleMania. Did you see it? Yeah, something about how for the it, first he, time I didn't feel it. He was out of I'm body during it, like out of he, body, and I'd quite like to go and work elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, that kind of very odd. Yeah, I think he's definitely he's aware that he's treading water, even though they've got him in that title picture. There's no plans for him. He's, he's not just picking it up. Yeah, he's no. not, yeah, he's not picking it up. So yeah, if he's only got, I think he said he's forty odd, isn't he? And if he's only got a small window of opportunity left, what does he do with it? Um, and he's he's one of those guys that he could he could just up and leave and go somewhere. He else. might be looking over at AEW in Japan and just thinking. There's guys there that I could run, that I could work a program with, and yeah. be relevant and have some great matches. And then he's looking around his current locker room and thinking, "Who who do I do? Who do I run a program? Yeah. Who, who, I, who, who I got? If I was him, I'd be thinking to myself, I got a second chance that I didn't think I was ever going to get. I was told this was not going to happen. Suddenly, yeah. I've got a window. I I came back. I've had a run. I've enjoyed it. I've worked with all the top guys that are on the current picture now." Where do I go next? And I would, I'd be the same as him. What I'd be do you think? Where... The sort of the sort of toll he's put on his body, and will continue to put on his body from the style of wrestling he does. He's yeah. got five, four or five years. A lighter schedule would extend that possibly by a couple of years. You know, so yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'd like to see. I'd, I I would genuinely like to see him go elsewhere. Um, I think he's done everything he needs to do in the Big E. Um, you know, it's. It's a risk, though, isn't it? It's not the be all and end all. The thing is that WWE, you know, for you and me, we're never going to get there. And, we, and for us, it's like winning the lottery. It's the be all and end all. But when you're a millionaire, when you're when you're a millionaire, winning the lottery is not the be all be all and the end all. It's nice to have more money, right? But you want to. He has the experience and the ability, and I'm sure the and I'm sure the bank balance and the yeah. security going forward that he can go and do other things. So yeah. I think if that's what he does do, I'd be really excited to see that. If I'm honest, and I'm and I haven't been really excited to see what Daniel's going to do for ages. If I'm honest, no. Me personally, this is what I again. We're going into fantasy booking mode here. This is not predictions. Um, I would l- much rather see Reigns versus Edge one on one because that's the match that I wanted. You've been saying anyway. that for three weeks. Yep. Yep. And Cesaro being in that match is too soon. He had a great match at WrestleMania, but this is the start of a push. It shouldn't be, there's your push, there's your match, done. Yeah. <laughs> I would actually, if, you, if you're going to do something with Daniel Bryan, if he's still sticking around, why not do Cesaro and Daniel Bryan? I know they're both babyface, but why not do the, hold on, if you want the belt, you've got to go through me. I was the one that was in that match. I was the next contender. Because let's face it, those two would tear it down. And it yeah, would be and, a great and Daniel thing. could lean Daniel Bryan could lean into heel for that match. Like or just he, pick the booze up for that match. You could even insert Rollins into that. Rollins, Daniel Bryan, and Cesaro in a triple threat would blow the roof off of any show. But so I hate anyway. triple threats, but anyway. I know you hate triple threats, but let's face it, those three could do it. They could do it and do it well. Yeah, as long as Cesaro was in the ring the entire time, which he has the which he has the gas tank for, right? He could yeah, right. He, he could be in the match like all twenty minutes of that while the other two get breaks. Like yeah. that's the only upside on triple threats when you're in one is that you only have to do like one third, like one half of the match. Yeah. Speaking of the triple threats, the other rumored match is for the Raw Women's Championship. The okay. rumor, the rumors match is Rhea versus Asuka. Which is obviously the matter of the and Flair thrown in to make it a three way. Um, I was really surprised, although I loved that they didn't, I was really surprised that they didn't do that at Mania, if I'm honest. Well, um, the rumor going around is that Flair was having dental work, I think. And, and she's being repackaged, isn't she? They repackaged her after Mania. So yeah. she, did, she did a thing going into Mania. Where she came out wearing like her feather jacket and what have you, had a match and it all fell apart. And she she went he- hell for leather with a couple of the girls and gave them a kicking. And then and then wasn't at Mania, 
And I think they're repackaging her. So maybe that's why. And maybe we'll see a repackaged flair at Backlash. And the backlash is I should have been at Mania. Like, yeah. Because it wasn't because it wasn't it meant to be a triple threat last year when Rhea couldn't make it over because of being stuck because of COVID. Wasn't it meant oh, to be wasn't it meant to be Rhea, Asuka, and Flair then? Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. I can't memory remember. Tic- I can't memory that. tickles, because I know Rhea was meant to be at that one last year. So memory, and I know it was meant to be with Flair. I memory tickles it. I think it was meant to be a, maybe it was Becky Lynch or something. I don't know, but maybe. I know the year before was Becky Lynch, Flair and Ronda, wasn't it? Yeah. But that's it. That's all that's been announced or rumoured at this point. Um, so there's Which so is much. Really surprising, right? Because so many matches were ended with a question mark. What's yeah. what's Bray doing? What's yeah. what's going on with the fiend? We haven't seen the fiend. Bray's back, but we haven't seen the fiend since WrestleMania. No. Um, Sheamus has got a belt and just doing nothing. No, no like Sheamus, no, no, no. Wasn't he doing? Uh, I, I, bet I might be wrong on this, but on Raw, I think, or he was doing um, the univer- uh, the US title open challenge gimmick, like Cena was doing. Okay. Which is not, I, I like the open challenge gimmick on TV because it gives you fresh opponents. But, um, you know, you've put the belt on Seamus, just do something with it. Come on, build something up, surely. Like, come on. Um, but yeah, that and, and I think Seamus has been there before doing that, hasn't he? Like running through people and just destroying them every other week. That's how they yeah. built him in the first time, wasn't it? First time. But, I mean, I, I, as much as I like the open challenge gimmick because it does create fresh matchups, it screams. We've got nothing else. We don't, we don't know what to do. <laughs> Desperate, do a bunch of open desperation. Just, yeah. Who's in the locker room? Like, oh, let's book him on with this guy this week. Where's, but, Chavo, um, where's Chavo Guerrero when you need him? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Bless him. Like, oh, Chavo, you're sat in the locker room. Go wrestle Seamus, will you? Give, give us eight minutes and don't die. Like, <laughs> But yeah, it's, like you said, it's, it's slim pickings on the news front. Slim pickings on the predictions front and the rumours front. It's just... it's Very, very inactive. Especially for a mania that didn't close the door on stuff. Very inactive. Very it surprising. A, I thought WrestleMania was generally all round a really positive. We talked about the fact that it felt like it was the beginning of uh, a new era because it was all about the new guys and it was about building these new characters and these new talents and there wasn't the over-reliance on old guys. Um and nostalgia and it just i don't know it just seems like there's nothing the general consensus again i don't watch the product and i, I you know but i see things on my social media the general consensus is that the roars and smackdowns that followed sucked and that shouldn't after wrestlemania after having a crowd in and having a good firm strong base they should have done they should have used that to springboard into these new storylines and do something with it and they haven't it seems sad yeah um Man, look, it, we, we're coming close to the hour, not quite on the hour. We can finish a wee bit short, but um, what, what we, what, how should we end this? We, we haven't. We, it feels like a flat ending. It feels like a low ending for us. We normally have something to, to talk about at the very end. What should we end on? Yeah, it's a good point, actually. Um, well, look, well, we can talk about what's coming up. Like we got, we're in April, and it's nearly the end of April. We've got the next UK lockdown milestone coming up in May. Uh, we've got the half terms and things coming up as well for the schools. So certainly going to be some training opportunities. We've got some training because we know we've got the rings going up, the Kapow rings going up in a scout hall because it needs yeah. some maintenance because it hasn't been up for like since August, since we bumped in it in August when we did the um, the pub show at the, at the, on the 31st of August, in fact. Um, I think, I so think I know we'll, Will's getting the ring up. And we need I know to he's invite- on that. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do a beards on the road. We're going to do a beards on the road vlog episode that may mm-hmm. may or may not come with the podcast or be uh, a substitute for the podcast. But yeah. I think we need to do a proper on the road documentary style, um, getting in the ring, talking about what we're doing, showing some footage off. I think that's definitely a must. We've got to do that. So again like comment subscribe on the youtube channel on our facebooks um and other social medias please so that you can actually keep track of matt because you know it's it's great to share this stuff but it's, it's even better if someone's watching it <laughs> yeah exactly um, 
but yeah and then i guess the next hopeful thing is like is the june announcement well we've got yeah yeah so we've got some big shows coming we, we the, the big i guess the big news is our big show in southampton we've got a brand new sh- venue in southampton um gonna be a big it's gonna be you know a big big experiment um but we're putting a massive show on for it that's gonna be i think the end of july did, did he yeah come back and confirm i mean again that? it's all we're all basing this on the roadmap that um, our UK government has laid out sticking. Um, and obviously there is the chance that it won't. Uh, we've got to kind of have that in the back of our minds that, you know, it could all, the, the rug could be pulled out from underneath us at any moment. We don't want to be like that. We don't want to be um, down on it and, and, and uh, not hopeful. I've got my second jab booked in June. So, you know, I'll be fully protected uh, by June. Um, but my immediate goals are get staying with the gym program, getting back into the ring a little bit more often because we've said, you know, if June rolls around and we can get back in the ring and do a show, great. But I don't want to get in there and half-arse it. I want to get in there and be better or at least as good as I was when I left. No, we we, we want to be better. Like, and I, there's no way we can't be. Like, the point of the matter is we've got to get some training under our belt over the next few weeks, May and June. We've got to get some training in. We need to speak of Rishi. Once the quality, regular adult sessions are back, we're going to be down there doing those. We've got to sweet talk the Rishi, sweet talk the champ and say, look, champ, we want a couple of hours, sort out a couple, you know, sort sort us out. We'll, we'll pay the price, whatever the going rate is. We'll split it between four or five of us or what have you. We'll get a regular evening where we can get down there and do basically the session we did on Sunday, you know, keep running the ropes, keep doing bumps, keep doing rolls, keep being innovative and working things through and getting some new shtick. And then keep in the gym. I'm going to keep going with my morning stuff. It's really starting to work. I'm dropping. I'm starting to look fucking hench. Um, you know, fucking look at that. Just fucking massive. Um, it's, it's sad. I, I feel my arm. I feel like it's bigger, but it looks no bigger. But like I tense it and I yeah, thought that I can... Yeah. It's it's just not there yet, but you know, um, you know, uh, it was nice uh, at the at the training because different eyes on me suddenly they were like, "Bro, I can get my arms around you," and I couldn't yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, Jake, like that. that Jake was, was nice. like, Jake was giving you a um, it was a like power a bomb, a power thing. bomb, and he he put his arms around. And was like, "Oh, I I um, I can link up on my forearms." <laughs> but that was nice. I enjoyed that. That was nice. That was a nice compliment. And, and, they said, and I got up for him. And he um, said to me that he picked me up for a power slam. He said, "Oh, you're more distributed, Sam. Yeah, you're spread yeah, you're out a- more. You're you're up here. Your weight's up here now, not down there. Like it's your yeah. You're as heavy. He, he, he said actually in, in the nicest possible way. He's like, <laughs> you feel heavier because you put on some muscle mass, but it's spread out and and it makes it easier to lift. And um, you know that again. That's nice to hear those things, isn't it? It could just be that he's weaker, bless him. <laughs> yeah, he's been a while. <laughs> right." Let's close it out. Now, you teased, uh, we'll end on this note, right? We'll end on this. Because you said, if we can get to 100 subscribers and we get that magic number and we can put our name on the YouTube channel, you said that I would do um, a tour of uh, the Glorious Man Cave. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you spotted anyone that watched last week's episode. The backdrop looks different. I've managed to get just two of my cabinets behind me just so you had something nice to look at. But this is un- undergoing a massive overhaul. Uh, it, it sounds a bit echoey in here. In fact, I've got paintbrushes and stuff everywhere. I'm repainting the walls and the whole nine yards. I, w- I will get this place looking marvellous if if you can get up to 100 subscribers. And I will do the virtual tour. We're 18 um, now. We got an extra one this morning, um, which was really great. We got we, People have been drips and drabs. And we did get like 65 views on last week's video. Which is fantastic. Yeah. You know, we really appreciate people watching. Um, you see just that gotta press the, the subscribe button underneath, guys. Come on. Yeah. If you're listening now, if you've stayed to the end, fuck me, if you've stayed now, if you stayed for an hour, you must like it. Press the press the subscribe button, press the notification button. Do you know what I mean? Like, because if you can hit the notification you the button, time. you'll get all the updates on what we're doing. Yeah, you see it all the time on these videos of like people putting stuff on YouTube that, you know, the analytics say that of the thousands that are watching them, only a few percentage have actually subscribed because it's easy just to click and watch and not do that. But you guys are what you're supporting us by watching this, which is great. We appreciate that. It's a minor effort for you to click a couple more buttons, sign in, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell. um, And that 
is huge to us. That minor, that, that look, watch, watch. It's this. That's it. That's all we got to do. Two clicks, and it means the world to us. Uh, it means nothing to you. So thank you uh, again for all the support you've done up to this point. Go the extra mile or the extra two clicks. It's not even a mile. It's two clicks. Go the extra two clicks. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, catch us for uh, the next episode, which will be episode 11. Episode 11. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Sweet. <laughs>